What is cracking, everybody? Well, Mother Nature decided to calm down a little bit. I don't see any terribly rainy looking clouds. Still a little breezy. We had like 50 mile an hour gust like four hours ago and pretty good rain. We're out here, Lake Independence, one of the biggest lakes in the area, as you can tell. Pretty, pretty decent size. Got a square bill crankbait. Got a skirted jig, like half ounce, I think, green pumpkin. Got a just a regular bass hook with a pegged bullet sinker. Got a wacky hook for a wacky rig sinko if it gets that desperate. And then got a new rod today. Only like a $30 spinning rod, but I found like 80 on the reel. Shimano Sahara or Sedona or something like that. Pretty smooth reel, kind of good looking. Doesn't really match the rod, but all together looks pretty cool. Plan is to hopefully, hopefully start by bass fishing. And I got some crawlers and uh, some jigs. And hopefully catch some walleyes or maybe some perch this evening. Who knows? Okay, now the mission is to find out what soft plastic I want to put on my beef shank. You know what we're going to Texas for a uh, goby? Goby or baby bass? I can't read that. But pretty sure this is a baby bass. Goby, baby bass, and uh, rainbow trout are my two, or my three. Uh, get out of here. I'm already messing up my words. Uh, goby, baby bass, and rainbow trout are my three favorite color Sanko worms to use. Usually I throw them wacky style, but uh, but uh, there's a lot of snags around here, and uh, with the peg sinker, you can kind of fish it a little faster than a uh, wacky style. But if it gets super desperate, I uh, go to the wacky rig. Honestly, I can't beat that. But that looks pretty decent. Let's see if we can't get out fish. Okay, so my train of thought behind this spot is a little a little cove back in here where uh, I'm starting to think maybe I just definitely just got hit um, maybe the wind is pushing some bait back up in here and then the uh, obviously the predator fish are going to follow the bait I'm hoping they follow them right in here and I can catch more than that little pike that I'm not even honestly sure if the GoPro actually recorded I'm having problems with this, with this beautiful piece of technology what well, we shall see I made it to the back end of this bay. I know you guys have probably heard me complain about my trolling motor in a handful of videos. It seems like the wind's kind of coming like this, so I might literally have to jet, heck, probably almost all the way across the lake to try and get out of this wind. But uh, that's a lot better option than just, just you know, destroying my trolling motor battery in the first hour of the day. Maybe I can catch dock fishing for, for smallmouth. I actually don't have, I really don't know if there's large mouth in here. There could be. Lakes, I mean, the lake's huge, but it's only like 30 foot deep. There definitely could be large mouth. Right after I stopped the camera, I got what's probably a pike. Nope. Little Smiley. Wow, look at that. That's a, that's a trophy. Oh, I'm sorry about that, bud. That's probably not even 10 inches. Right under the dock, flipping docks for smallies. Only in the UP. <laughs> That's my worm all up. Looking for that one's great great granddad. Yeah, my ball. I'm surprised he could even get the hook, honestly. Pull another one out from underneath there. Oh, I'm right on top of it. Got a birthday coming up. Oh, well, today's what? Friday, the 15th. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, old man. 
you guys probably won't see this video until Monday, which is actually my birthday. What am I wrong? Oh, wow. Bottom down. So whichever one of you faithful subscribers wants to buy me a new trolling motor for my birthday. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, definitely just about to make a move and get out of this freaking ridiculous wind. Come on, trolling motor. So we're not relatively stored away. Buck the wind to get to a new spot. Sorry, let's go before I end up in the beach. Okay, well, launch from like right there. There, I think there's another little bay, it looks like maybe kind of sort of over there, but I have a sneaky suspicion the wind's kind of coming from over there and kind of just curling. So I'm gonna to try to shoot for that corner to get out of the wind. I'm hoping that whole back shoreline might be a wind, wind free zone, but I might have to run. A bunch of stumps and everything down here. I don't know, two fish already, nothing to brag about, but catching fish. All right, I made it over here. Wind's not coming the way that I thought it would. I was expecting. I was just in that bay over there. Wind was going like that, but now the wind's coming like this. It's definitely curling like I thought, but nice little drop off right here. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm gonna throw the pike slaying crankbait. See what we can see what we can do. There's a good deal of walleyes in here. I was kind of hoping that maybe a crankbait would be like a oh oh got all picked up. I was hoping that a crankbait would be, you know, fairly universal bait. Potentially catch a walleye dinner. That's the, that's the plan at least. We'll see, I'll keep you updated. Oh, I got, oh, big one. Gotta be a pike. God, oh, of course. Not even a good one. God. He still, of course he stole my worm too. This one might be 18 inches. Freaking ridiculous. Where are the big fish? Oh, he hit it pretty good though. I don't know. Do you call it? Do you call it? Do you still call it a punch rig if you're not punching with it? Yeah. Oh, that's what I got on. Do you get when you. All right. No. All right. So now that you got a punch rig, do you put. um? Do you put a black sinker on it, bullet sinker, or do you put the, the regular lead one? What'd you buy? Should use a tungsten. Well, alright, you, you don't need, well, you don't need tungsten. Uh -huh. You don't need tungsten, you don't need an $8 sinker. Uh, don't occur, you know. Well, either way, you need to have, make sure they're black. You don't need four or five a trip. Uh, 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 uh. But I've noticed, I mean, I've thrown the same setup with the regular, you know, gray lead one, and then this, you know, with the black one, the, the black painted one definitely works a heck of a lot better. Yeah. Caught three fish. Yeah, I was so I was done with one cast with my jig rod. Huh? I was done it for one cast with my jig rod. What do you mean? I won the election day. You were done after one cast. Yeah, once I pulled up the uh, green slime all over it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so that last little bit of audio probably didn't make much sense was on the phone with the uh with the old man just bsing about fishing We've got the big tournament coming up but caught a pike on the punch rig still not even anything to brag about there are big pike in here but uh, wind's making it. Wind's making her a little tough to fish. Okay, well the wind has pretty much aft off for the most part and uh, no sign of the smallie mouse over here, pretty shallow, I don't know, I feel like in 
pretty solid rule of thumb is the further you get away from a boat launch, which is like right there, the better the fishing is. So I'm thinking it's about 8.30. Got probably about another hour or so to fish. Might make a run down to uh, the far end and try and get into some stumps. Hopefully catch some more fish and maybe even find a largemouth bass. Only caught a couple largemouth so far this year and nothing to brag about. But nobody really talks about largemouth in here. Not 100% sure if they're even in here. But I figure if there is any in here, they're probably going to be donkeys. And uh, yeah, we're at the shot. This, I mean, this end sucks. So mine as well. Make a move. Definitely liking my new rod. Only like a $30 rod and $80 reel. So I lost two of my spinning rods on my last adventure. So I needed a new one for this uh, for this trip. So I'll pick this up today. But we're going to make a move. Okay. Made it to, as you guys can tell, some stumps. Spent a lot of... Well, no, I haven't spent a lot of time on this lake. I've spent a lot of time on this lake in a couple different trips trolling for walleyes. And uh, honestly, I mean, we're, we're in shallow water here, but never noticed these stumps. There's a bunch of them. So I'm thinking there's going to be a bunch of... That could have been a fish jumping. I uh, can't tell. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know if I can make a video out only catching three fish. If you're seeing this, I either caught a bunch more right now or went out <laughs> went out the tomorrow and uh, well the day after and caught a bunch. So we'll see. Go with the sank up first. It is shallow up in here. Oh, I don't know. Square bell country. Can't throw my can't throw my deep crank in here. Oh, really? Wow, okay. Okay. That was a fish all day. Can I get a hook set or did he freaking pull my pants down and I worm? Probably pulled my pants down. Yeah, let's go over the square bell. I definitely screwed up. I forgot that I needed to pull more braid on this uh rod so if i cast real far i get down to my backing it's never a never a good deal but oh, i'm digging bottom with this really well it's real shallow up there that's right though sometimes the, the fish like to see the crank they kind of just digging into the bottom wow it's like a foot deep in here Tip, if you're hitting bottom with your crankbait, you can point your rod tip up and it'll uh, pull her up a bit shallower. <laughs> uh, as long as I'm not casting with the wind, I don't, I don't seem to get to the backing, but... Oh, where, oh, where can the bass be? All right, back to the Sanko. This textbook, largemouth country. If I uh, actually knew for a fact there were largemouth in here, I have a little more confidence. But definitely, definitely can see a nice, per, I'd, I'd say nice pike, but it'd probably be like a 15 incher. I'll take one of those right now. It's been a little while since I caught a fish. Oh my gosh. GoPro screws me again. Oh, I had one on literally right at the boat on this crankbait. And uh, as soon as I hit the button, he popped off. Could not tell you guys how many fish I've lost doing that. But we're sitting like five something or a foot of water back in, I mean, I've learned this whole back size is super shallow. Wasn't really anything going on in the stumps. So now I'm trying to kind of just get out to these, uh, out to the drop-offs. There's like some drop-off fingers and stuff in here. We're running out of daylight. But hopefully we'll catch a couple more fish. Okay, well, turned around. You guys get a nice view of the sunset. Literally just rigged up a rod with a night crawler because I was, you know, getting towards dark and I was, I was thinking maybe, you know, let's jig for, jig for walleyes. The wind was nice and calm, had a perfect slow drift going down and, uh, 
just picked up by probably about 20 mile an hour. This is what we're dealing with right now. So I don't see too many big waves yet. It's probably a heck of a lot rougher further down where I have to go. Uh, might be calling her, might be calling her a night a little earlier than expected. Mark in a ton of fish. We toss the anchor out. See if we can't catch uh catch something of the eater variety. Anchor will hold us with gales. Gale force winds. <laughs> Welcome to the UP, everybody. Wait five minutes or go five miles and the weather will change. Alrighty, everybody, what's cracking? Oh, beautiful mallards. Um, what was I, I going to say? Oh, yeah. Just made it down to the boat, day two. Uh, it was sunny as I was walking here, but now we got thunderstorms making their way in. Guys fishing my spot. I thought I caught two little, two little baby pike. That's right. We're gonna find some fish today. Mother Nature's probably gonna whoop the, whoop the tar out of us. But uh, only one way to catch fish, and that's to fish. All right. Well, I get to finally test the rain jacket out. But uh, the thunder's coming back, so I think we are gonna make the responsible decision, which is something I usually don't do. Go wait this uh, bow hockey out back at the camp. It's nice that we actually have friends that have campers, so when we go camping, I don't have to just sit in the tent, which is fine, you know, it's part of the experience. But when you're sitting, when you just want to fish, you got to sit in a tent. It's kind of lame. Oh my gosh! I caught a fish on the worm. I hope it's a. I'm stuck in something. Could be a walleye, honest. Oh my god. Oh, it is. I was not expecting to actually catch anything, so I'm definitely not ready. Oh, it's a pike. Oh, just a nice. Oh my god, a keeper. Walleye! Mmm! 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 If you can't tell, I'm jacked. Oh my god, no way. Look at this gorgeous fish. Just a gorgeous. Bring the angle up. Sometimes when you're um, oh, I'm starting to regret what I was just trying to do. I didn't. Really, that wouldn't hurt if I didn't already have a cut on the top of my finger. It got definitely going from the other side with a fresh finger. Sometimes when they got your uh, bait choked, you can go in and pop the hook out from the inside. Oh, I just freaking had her too. There we go. <laughs> that's, I bet that's a 17, 18 inch walleye. Where's my ruler? Yeah. 17 incher. Keeper all day. All about the walleyes up here in the UP. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, hope you enjoyed that video. Usually if we go out and we only catch four fish, we typically don't make a video, but the fact that it was three different species caught, I mean, a baby bass, some baby pike, but uh, probably the only reason we made this video was for that one, that one walleye. That's actually only the second walleye I've caught out of that lake. That lake's pretty, uh, pretty tough. It's probably just because I, have, I don't fish it much. I usually only fish it once, twice a year during the summer and maybe once or twice during the winter, but, uh, there's definitely big fish that'll come out of there, so it's going to be getting getting some more time from us. The state record, Michigan state record perch, actually came out of that lake. It was like 21 or 21 and a half inches, or something crazy like that. But once again, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for the support. Today's actually my birthday, so uh, we were out fishing before I came home to edit this video from last weekend. And uh, needless to say, you'll see tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow I think we got an Ask Hunter for Life episode, and then you're going to see today's fishing video on Wednesday and uh we got we got some cool things in that video got a top water blow up caught on drone and got a uh the biggest smallmouth of the day caught on drone as well so uh gonna do our best to bring you guys daily videos at least Monday through Friday if I'm in if I'm in the office Saturday and Sunday 
we'll bring you videos then too but uh, at least our, our goal is at least five videos a week so once again thank you guys for watching thank you for your support give us a thumbs up thumbs down whatever you're feeling leave a comment we love talking with you i know you all already have but if you haven't hit that subscribe button we appreciate the heck out of you guys for your support congratulations to the winners of our 7,500 subscriber giveaway. Next giveaway is at 10,000. So hopefully that'll be coming in the next month or so, two months probably. But uh, thanks for watching, thanks for the support. As always, happy adventures.